Good afternoon, and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome, no matter if you are here in person or watching online. We are gathered together to celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. The readings can be found on page 9 of your bulletin, which is now our permanent worship aid. Please remember to take the bulletin home with you or dispose of it in the narthex as we cannot use them again. If you are watching online, our bulletin can be found on our website, and it is a great resource for you with information about our parish family, our activities, and our spirituality. Please do not forget to read it. In order to keep our parish family as safe as possible, we have expanded our mass times beginning this week. Our weekday masses will now be at 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. And we will be adding a 315 overflow mass on Saturday afternoons. More information can be found in the front page story of our bulletin. We are blessed to have you here again at St. John the Evangelist. We continue to provide a safe and healthy mass environment with your assistance in respecting the lives of those around you. Reminders of some of the policies we have enacted to ensure your safety include continuing to require wearing masks properly over your mouth and nose at all times while you are within our church facilities, including during mass. Shields are not considered replacements for masks, so a mask must also be worn. Staying a respectful social distance from other individuals and families. Receiving communion should be in the hand with your mask on. Once you have received the host, please move to the side to remove your mask and consume it, then place your mask back on. If you feel compelled to receive communion on the tongue, we ask that you please wait at the end of the priest's communion line. Our Eucharistic ministers will only provide communion in the hand. And out of respect for the life and health of all our parish family, we hope you would wait until all others have received before taking communion from the priest. And finally, providing your generous offerings to our ushers at the exit doors of the church when you depart. You will see that the back wing doors are now available for your exit only after mass concludes. Ushers will be posted there as well. Please kindly take a moment now to ensure that your cell phone is powered off. Thank you and thanks also for respecting the holy integrity of the Mass by remaining through our closing hymn. The celebrant for Mass this afternoon is our pastor, Father Tom. Would you now please turn to the front page of the bulletin and join me in praying our parish prayer for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for all creation. In the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth and all teachers of peace who inspire the many faith traditions, help me and all the people of the world learn how to replace hate, war, oppression, and division with love, peace, freedom, and reconciliation. Help me to embody your love in my relationships with my family, friends, strangers, even my enemies. I commit myself to this sacred task throughout my life. So let it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you now please rise and join in singing our opening hymn on page 11 of the bulletin, We Three Kings, page 11 of the bulletin.
Good afternoon. My friends, let us begin the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's great to see all of you as we come together to celebrate this solemnity of Epiphany. As we come together to celebrate this Holy Mass, we first take a moment and ask God to forgive us for our sins. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the people. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over your appearance, his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your, so your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Will I die? 
king son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, 
I by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they, see, they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Dr. Les Parrott, in his book, Shuda Kuda Wuda, tells an old legend about three men. Each man carried two sacks, one sack tied in front of his neck and the other sack resting on his back. When the first man was asked what was in his sacks, he said, in the sack on my back are the good things friends and family have done for me. That way they're hidden from view. In the front sack are all the bad things that have happened to me and all the mistakes I've made. Every now and then I stop, open the front sack containing all the bad things that have happened to me, take the things out, examine them, and think about them. Because he stopped so much to concentrate on all the bad stuff in his life, his pace was slow, and he made very little progress. When the second man was asked about his sacks, he replied in exactly opposite way. In the front sack are all the good things that have happened to me, he said. I like to see them, so quite often I take them out to show them off to people and reminisce. But what about the sack in the back, he was asked. He answered, I keep all my mistakes, all my regrets in there and carry them all the time. Sure, they're heavy, they slow me down, but you know, for some reason, I can't put them down. When the third man was asked about his sacks, he answered in a slightly different way. Like the second man, he answered, the sack in front, of it, in front is where I keep all the blessings I have experienced, all the great things other people have done for me. The weight isn't a problem. In fact, it keeps me moving forward. But as for the second sack, he answered, the sack on my back is empty. There is nothing in it. I cut a big hole in its bottom. Then I put all my regrets, all my mistakes from my past in that sack. They go in one end and out the other. So I'm not carrying around any extra weight at all. I believe that is a good story for this first Sunday in the new year. My friends, we all carry around hurts and regrets that weigh us down. The new year would be a good time to cut a hole in our sack and let those hurts and regrets fall through so that we can focus on the good things that, had ha that have happened in our lives, the many blessings that we have received. Today, as we celebrate the solemnity of Epiphany, we also enter into this new 2021 new year, perhaps with new hope. When we say that someone has had an epiphany, we usually mean that that person has had a moment in which they have achieved a realization, an awareness, or a knowledge of something, after which events are thrown into a new light, 
such epiphanies may be life-changing. Most of us have had a difficult time this past year. Maybe we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe we are in need of an epiphany in our life. My friends, we are in the right place to turn our life over to God and to ask His guidance and His persistence in helping us make a new start. Light. Light is a favorite symbol throughout the scriptures. Christ said about our witness that we do not light a candle and put it under a bushel basket. Christ himself is seen as the light of the world. When Isaiah sought to proclaim the coming of the anointed one of God, he declared, rise up in splendor. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. That is great news as we begin this new year. Our light has come. Christ is our light, and in him is no darkness at all. Just as light is the appropriate symbol for Christ, darkness is the appropriate symbol for a world without him, without Christ. Have you ever wondered what people centuries, decades from now will think about our culture. In her book, A Fistful of Fig Newtons, novelist Jean Shepard depicts a group of archaeologists in the distant future who are excavating the remains of New York City, burrowing under Madison Avenue, the heart of the world of modern advertising. They discover tin canisters holding reels of videotape containing hours and hours of television commercials from our time. The archaeologists determined these reels must have something to say about what was important to us. They finally find a way to view these tapes. They grow excited with anticipation. One of the videotapes contains a scene in which three women move into the foreground. They are pushing carts of some kind. The three of them stop and reverently pick up some mysterious white circular rolls. Their eyes glaze in ecstasy as they handle the rolls. A stern male figure arrives clad in a white uniform. uniform. He resembles a guard or perhaps an officer of some kind definitely a figure invested with authority. Ladies, he says, please don't squeeze the shaman. The three women continue to squeeze the rose with even more intensity. The guard, overcome by emotion himself, begins to squeeze a roll. One woman squeals, I just can't help it, Mr. Whipple. Nervously, the guard squeezes even harder. See, Mr. Whipple? Charmin so squeezably soft. Amazed at the apparent significance of this archaeological find, the leader of the excavation says, if we can find out what was on those Charmins or what they were used for, I believe we would know what their civilization was all about, what they believed in. From your laughter, I can see that you remember those Charmin commercials. I do hope our culture is about more than bathroom tissue, which did become a popular theme this past year. Life can be so confusing. I wish that life was as easily explained as that great philosopher of the comic strip, Charlie Brown, once decided that it was. Lucy is saying to him, life is a mystery, Charlie Brown. Do you know the answer? Charlie Brown answers, be kind, don't smoke, be prompt, smile a lot, 
Eat sensibly, avoid cavities, and mark your ballot carefully. Avoid too much sun, send overseas packages early. Love all creatures, above and below. Ensure your belongings and try to keep the ball low. Before he can get out another platitude, Lucy interrupts, hold real still, she says, because I'm going to hit you a very sharp blow upon the nose. We can appreciate her frustration, can't we? None of us appreciates a know-it-all who spouts platitudes that miss our real needs altogether. What we really need is a little encouragement at times, don't we? We need hope. This past year has been rough for all of us in many different ways. Christ offers the encouragement we need. Christ offers the hope that we need. Arise, shine, your light has come. Christ is our light. He is our guide, our strength, the one who fills our life with meaning. Thank God we have a star to follow. It is the same star that guided the Magi long ago. It is the light of Christ. Christ who is dependable, whose love never fails. If you look in the dictionary, the first definition for light is something that makes vision possible. In other words, light makes it possible for us to see. Without light, we are hopelessly blind, blind to our surroundings, blind to our situations and circumstances, blind even to ourselves. Light makes it possible for us to see clearly things as they really are. We enter this new year with new hope. However, 2021 is not going to somehow make everything different. We see the light, but we know it will take time to get better. In order to help 2021 to be a better year, we need to become light for one another. Elizabeth Kabler-Ross, the pioneer on dying and how it relates to living, once wrote, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within them. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. My friends, may the light of Christ so shine in our hearts that our lives may glow with the light of his love every day of this year. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The light of Jesus Christ has dawned upon the whole world. Gratefully, we offer our prayers in his name. Our response will be, Christ, Son of God, hear us. That the church may tirelessly reveal the glory of Christ to all nations and peoples who do not yet know him, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Son, Son of, of God, God hear, us. hear us. That the faith of the Magi inspire Christians to be people of prayer, especially where they face persecution for their beliefs around the world, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Son of God, hear us. For our parish family of St. John the Evangelist, may our church have a fruitful year in which prayer, friendship, the works of charity, mercy, and justice flourish. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Son of God, hear us. For our troops and their families, for first responders and healthcare workers, for the unborn and their parents, for all victims of abuse, that they be created anew in the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Son of God, hear us. For worshipers who are praying online, that all may be comforted and assured that we are all one body of Christ, experiencing God's presence in the same sacrifice of the Mass, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Son of God, hear us. Remember those who have died, especially for all the holy souls in purgatory, that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Son of God, hear us. We pray especially for Stefano Linzalone, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son, Son of, of God, God, hear us. us. In a moment of silence, let us present to God all of our intentions. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ Son of God, God, hear us. God of grace, hear our prayers, and as we celebrate your Son, the light of the world, make your people a beacon of hope for all in darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a reminder, please hold your offertory gifts until the end of Mass and usher will be at the exit doors of the church to receive your generosity. Our offertory hymn can be found on page 10, the first Noel, page 10 of your bulletin.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation may be ours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fountiful holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share this peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray the act of spiritual communion with those who are joining us for this Mass from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
down on page 12 of the bulletin. What child is this? Page 12.
Let us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I have been asked for uh, prayers for the little baby Ghana who is fighting for his life. And I ask you to, to pray for this baby with me in a special way as we uh, offer this prayer through the intercession of the Blessed Mother to look after him and his parents. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now that the hour for our death. Amen. Thank you. I hope all of you have a beautiful week. God bless you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace.
As we go forth, please join in singing our closing hymn found on page 13 of the bulletin, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, page 13. Thank you. 